injured here. 3 3 Typhon Arena, blue team. We've got Z-Talk as a Hive Tyrant is going to break something already. There we go. Very durable commander walks through objects and cannot be suppressed on good offense. Disruption and support begins in melee combat with a basic synapse breaking stuff again alongside its fear as a plague champion starts off range combat. Damage over time bolter can get melee weapons. Some great versatility this guy. A little bit of support can build turrets and repair but is very slow. This is the Night Lord's elite scheme and rounding off the blue team it's the Great Cornholio as a Chaos Sorcerer. A Batman Chaos Sorcerer apparently. Manipulative commander, some good offense and powerful ways to screw with you endlessly. Starts off in melee combat. Red team, Hans Moleman is a warlock, a melee commander that leaps into combat. Some great disruption, mobility and some good support options too. This is the Harley Quinn scheme, elite scheme that is. Alongside two Space Marine players we have Hunter as a force commander, very good offense fights. In melee combat, can also tank, disrupt, and support with buffs. And rounding off the team is Adila as a tech marine. Starts off range combat, puts out some good damage, can also support with structures and repair. Wade into melee combat to a frantic firefight to begin with at the bottom. It's Space Marines v Chaos all the way down here. Some Zeke's worship here for Carnolio. Not sure why he's worshipping there, but they do get away, I think. Right? Yes, they do. And. These tactical marines will cap, so it looks like the early VP down here goes to the Space Marines, and it could be very, very powerful end game. We all know about Space Marine Tier 3 and team games can be pretty brutal. These Horman Gods wandering around up here, they are. They're going to go for that natural VP of Hans, who's got a Shuriken Cannon on the way to try and slow this high of Tyrant down. It won't suppress him, but might dissuade him from engaging head on at least here are some spore mines can they do anything destructed did a good job on them i think destructor does is it 65 explosive damage or grenade damage or something weird like that can be really painful early on especially it doesn't quite scale superbly well would be cool if it had slightly lower damage because it is really brutal against bunched up heretics you only have 75 hit points per model i think it does 60 damage so that is pretty damn nasty for heretics maybe if it was lowered a little bit but scaled with his level that would be cool 477 to 485 what's going on bottom a beacon up already the plague champion is pretty fantastic though at pushing against that kind of thing since if it's covered by a turret or a devastator as it often is he Still fires at the same rate when suppressed and can get a bowel spewer up, which will make short work of any structure. And of course, as a plague champion, as a chaos commander, he can also get noise marines up. Down goes that force commander. Fear has lost his heretics, it looks like, it looks like even. Cornholio going straight into some havocs to bring some control to this bottom VP. He's setting up under infiltration, nicely done, and then reveals the havocs to suppress those targets. Doom Bolt's going in there as you can see and those things. Talk about nasty early on. I think the Doom Bolt's have the Destructor B. Yes, Destructor is instantaneous but Doom Bolt's pack a superb punch. Play Champion is getting his Mucus Discharge. He's in behind this beacon but he's not taking it down. Assault Marines jumping in, Heretic's there to counter initiate, they don't have their Aspiring Champion but doing a big chunk of damage here to that single model, that model might go down. Heretic's Doom Blast, that was risky but they do get away or do they? Assault Marines jump and they're going to finish off those Heretic's I think and then get away, need to run away, there we go. CSM also in retreat, Red Team retaining the bottom and Fear should have got up a Bile Spear there I think. Not only is it good for that beacon, but it's also just really good on Typhoon Arena in general because you can hit the central power and you can also push through the bottom if you win your engagement and hit this pretty quickly. Bowser can do a lot for you here. Billy's Discharge can shut down a lot of this area as well. But it's the Space Marine team getting a power bash with Sergeanted Scouts, Tactical Marines getting a flame up. They're not shooting right now though. What's that? There we go. Can they... Oh, Havoc's coming in to shut them down and they might not get a single generator here. Depends when these Havoc's set up. There's the Flamer. Doom Bolt's going in. Flamer does get the generator. Just about gets it. Barely. And now they're forced off. But they can fall back to the beacon, of course. Adila now has a turret up. 
Not a prime location, I don't think, since the blue team can just come around here and flank all that stuff. Usually the turret is actually put around here. Since these walls are obviously not shot blockers or you wouldn't be able to shoot off them. They can shoot through it as it were. 391 to 462. Or maybe more commonly even more put around here the turret. Hive Tyrant has pushed through onto the power. Raven is in play for Z Talk. He has some spore mines up as well. They're going to go down though. Down they go. Full retreat out for Z Talk. Did he drop a Ravener model? Did not drop a Ravener model. And now, I guess Hans has the choice. Does he push the power or does he go and grab that VP and maybe try and get this contested power into Red Hands? Looks like he's going top. Has the aspect up for both of those Dire Avengers. Red team have the bottom sewn up right now. This wreck point uncapped though. Blue team just focusing on holding their power for now, which is the right thing to do. Holding both those powers, as you can see. And now Fear can come back and join Cornholio bottom. But how do they push against this? Cornholio replacing his heretics. Fear has not replaced his heretics. It's a, a mistake, I think. Not only did they give you that awesome worship support, but the Nurgle Shrine can be fantastic down here in Tier 2. 344 to 462. Cornholio basically fighting two players here. He needs to back away. He needs to recognize that quickly and back away. Heretic sticking in the engagement. He's trying to get the Havoc to a safe place, but they are jumped. And Assault Marines. Is that double Assault Marines? What is this going on here? It is double Assault Marines for Hunter. Ran off a little bit too prematurely there, I think. But Flamer on the gens. Fear seems to be caught between two theatres at the top and bottom. And is not really achieving much of anything right now. Harassing hands a little bit, but hands. Look at these shields all over the place for those double Dire Avengers. Double shurikens trying to avoid getting jumped. There is a jump. It's a good place for it. Nicely done. Bantries are there to counter any shit, so they need support. What does the Hive Tyrant have? Has extended carapace to help him charge down those shurikens. So no improved synapse for those Raveners or his other little Tyranid friends. Cormagons capping this power. They can go back up to get this wreck point after which is now fully mature wipes out some dire avengers hands more man not paying attention that's a good wipe there red team still holding bottom and looks like they bashed the node no real need to panic yet though i don't think for blue team they haven't had their power completely wiped although they did get a decap which is pretty bad and small man having some lag issues i think 281 to 462 everyone going tier 2 apart from hands who is floating quite a lot here fear oh cancels his plague marines gets a blood pressure going sensing perhaps the heavy tier ones relatively speaking double assault marines is pretty heavy with flamer for adilla and those structures of course anything else on his tech marine no he's level 2 though killed a fair few heretics i think might see a little grenade here from adilla adilla is Pretty fantastic at throwing his grenades. Even when he's pretty rusty and hasn't played for a while, he still tends to throw his grenades perfectly. There it is, on those heretics, wiping out all of the heretic models apart from one and the aspiring champion, of course, who tanks it. Nice grenade from Bidula, as we've come to expect. Omegons do cap that up, and Z Talk has completely taken the top. I think Hans has hopefully got over his lag issues and is back in the game. Play champion tied up and suppressed, but here comes a blood crusher. Now, they do have double assault marines, so he could get two melter bombs up pretty quickly. Tech marine also has some fantastic tools to use against a blood crusher. Melter gun and signum is on the way, so that blood crusher may not last very long. I think plague marines would have been the safer bet. They were not... If they... If they went and bashed his power or something then yeah get a blood crusher going but we have a whirlwind as well and the hunter killer will help against a blood crusher there is dark flames and dark flames will wipe out these structures you need to double repair them to stop them wiping them out as you can see down they go so i don't think the dealer should replace them since it's going to have dark flames again maybe we'll see the is jumping in do they have sergeants? No, but one of them does have the thunder and lightning for a melter bomb. 
Could throw that blind grenade on those Havocs, maybe. No. Oh, here comes some Mark of Corn. Havocs for Cornholio. He might get double Mark of Corn. Mark of Corn now for Fierce Havocs also. And now he's getting some Plague Marines. The Blood Crusher went down immediately. Wow. It wasn't even a missile launcher. I didn't even see what took it down. Melter Bomb and the Whirlwind. Was that enough to take it down? Oh, Power Fist on the Force Commander. There we go. And Mark Target might have gone off as well. Was not paying attention at all to the Blood Crusher. Banshees chasing down some Termigrants. They have Aspect of Fleetness. You see that Exarch with Mirror Swords, as it puts it. Power Weapons with almost 54 Power Melee DPS on that single model. That's pretty nasty. Oh, they put up another turret here as a dealer. It's going to go down pretty quickly. Look at those auto cannons making short work. Even under repair goes down. The beacon is protected by this shot blocking wall though. Whirlwind's taking some shots. Now getting some repairs from the scout. Tech Marine of course can also repair. Also has the global repair from his global bar of stuff. Oh, Dark Flames again on the beacon. It's going to take it down. The Tech Marine repairing. And the scouts repairing, not enough to save it. Wow. Need to be start start that double repair a lot earlier, I think. Autark on the field for hands. Where did she drop? Looks pretty cool with the um, Harley Quinn scheme. Can be really hard to pick her out when she doesn't have those big wings. Oh, look at this. Sacred Standard up for the Force Commander. Constant 25% damage buff for all of your allies around the Force Commander goes up to 40% at when he falls as you can see there also has artifice up very popular war gear for the force commander and for good reason bunch more health health regen and a bit of energy too 196 to 408 cornholio with a chaos dreadnought was that a good idea he knows there's a fist right maybe he's getting mark of corn for some sorcerer shenanigans there we go mark of corn otherwise that fist would wreck it still pretty risky Either way, he needs that warp. And he doesn't have the red for the warp right now, I don't think. With the hunter killer and the fist and the mark target. Dreadnought might be in a little bit of trouble, but we'll see. Labour is pushing forward, trying to take out this whirlwind. Rear arm hit. Almost finished it off. Grenade from Adilla misses this time. Now he's trying to turn him up in melee combat while he repairs. And here come Assault Marines double assault marines even so i don't think they're going to be able to get a shot off no they're not do they both have sergeants now yes they do i hear banshee screaming what are they yelling at forcing off the raveners and my man pushed back to his vp there but seems relatively safe what's the hive tyrant got he's got rendered talons and now has improved synapse oh with gene stealers as well no melee synapse but he does have the improved synapse on the hive tyrant which is often enough to make your gene stealers pretty deadly they don't get the melee steel bonus from the melee synapse but the 25% more health which I think this gives is that right yep is I think enough to get them into combat and to do things warp spiders on the field tearing apart those termigants with all that piercing damage the exarch actually has pretty decent melee damage as well oh no wow almost got wiped out there by is that double marker zinc csm it is. I guess it was expected against double Space Marines up bottom. What does Cornholio have on his CSM? He's also getting Marco Zinch. So that is a hell of a lot of those Inferno bolts flying at the Marines. But can they avoid the double ASM jumps? Would it have been prudent to get at least one of these guys with Mark of Corn to counter initiate? Play Champion can still do a bunch of that. I'm surprised we don't see the sword with double ASM jumping in. The sword would be doing some good stuff here. Chosen Plague Marines would also be pretty good. But no sign of either. And look at this. Space Marine's been a little bit more mobile. Coming for the power. Should be able to get at least one of those gens down. Before the blue team can respond I think. Looks like they're going after the node in fact. 186 to 349. Plasma Cannon has found a firing solution on that shrine. It's not going to last very long now. Here comes the Chaos Dreadnought. Oh look. Chains of Torment, that's a good way to control double ASM from the robes. 2 to 1 cat for blue. And they have the bottom. 
Can the Space Marines get into Tier 3 and get those heavy hitters, the Land Raiders and Terminators and stuff? Dreadnought locked down by the Fist, but should be okay. He has the Red to warp it out as well. And with melee resist, can stand up to the Force Commander pretty well. What's going on top? z -talk is decapping Hans now. Hans is into Tier 3 though. So we could see a fire prison relatively soon. Hunter has lost one of his ASM completely. Missed that again. Chaos Dreadnought having a real effect down here. A real effect. Adilas does get his scouts away. He's going to say he's forgotten about his scouts, but he didn't. And the tactical marines are just going to get absolutely shredded by those Marcos each. Wow. It's a good setup. Loads of Marcos Inc. CSM and a Chaos Dreadnought with Mark of Corn around to scare the crap out of anything that wants to get close to them. Triple cap now for Blue. Looking pretty damn strong. The Space Marine players are into or going tier 3. A lot of red for Odilla. Maybe drop a Venerable Dreadnought with repair support. Would do a lot in helping to combat this Dreadnought. Could just drop it on the CSM's faces as well. Whirlwind is still in play. Uh, Cornholo obviously pushing his thing into base because he knows he can warp it out. There is Flesh Over Steel. And there's Mark Target, but it does get warped back to safety by Cornholio. Grenade indicator on the Sorcerer lets you know he has those robes of torment. And Z Talk still has the top here. Has a zone throat. Ravenous with Devourer as well. He's putting out a lot of range damage. And Endless Swarm on the Termigan Broods. All supported, of course, by a Brood Nest. Do we have Immolator? We do have Immolator. And that's a prime target for it there. Double Termigans bunched up with a Brood Nest. Hasn't put it down yet, though. There we go. Gonna need to run those Termigans out of there. That would have been really painful if they stood in it. But it does eventually force off the Tyrannus can retake his natural. And in fact, look at this, the Autark being sneaky and gets the blue team's natural. So it's going to be a two to one, maybe even a double for red. Central mass destroyed. You really need to be disciplined in taking that thing down. It does go down very quickly when you shoot it. Can be tough to see it, though, in amongst all the stuff. Assault Marines jumping into so much trouble here. Barely get away. Red team have taken the bottom for a triple for red. 171 to 149. That is a quick turnaround. How the heck did they manage that? Sneaky Autark. That is how Gene still is on capping duty up there. Those auto cannons with those markers in CSM. That is scary, scary range damage to anything. Mark of Corn Dreadnought on Blood Rage. Is he going off the allied stuff? Makes your Dreadnought a hell of a lot better, but you lose control. Down goes the Force Commander. That's going to give things around him a 40% damage buff. As long as he's down there. And it's a good place to go down for that. We call it Tactical Death. Because obviously he didn't mean to go down, right? That's what Force Commanders always say when they have to stand it. I meant to die. Plague Champion level 6 now with Plague Fist. Can do some work. A great capping tool also with Pestilence and Mucus Discharge. Autark is fleeing from Gene Stillers. Look how quick she is. That is awesome. Can jump over stuff too. Makes the Warlock look slow. Level 3. Seer Council on the field. So Hans wants to wants to get stuck into those Gene Stillers maybe. Could also use the leap to go after that zone throw. Since they can be really effective against single entities. Their leaps actually do damage. So if they all jump on the same target. It's a bunch of damage up front before you even start attacking. 144 to 124 Assault Terminators coming into play, called into the top by Hunter. Nicely done and gets the zone throw. Beautifully done by Hunter. Really good call in. Adil also has some Terminators of his own with Power Fists and Storm Bolters trying to get that Hive Tyrant down. Seer Council chasing, but they cannot get him. Seer Council getting some changes in 2.4. They now emit a passive 15%. Wow, beautiful grenade from a dealer to get that retreating hive tyrant that was awesome i was gonna say the seer council now emit a passive 15 percent range damage reduction which also affects them you can see the blue markers below their own feet also and it's got a decent range as you can see look at that 
supporting all of this stuff with that aura. They used to emit a suppression resistance aura, but now it's that straight up damage resistance, which is pretty cool. Gives you a, quite a compelling reason to get them, I think. Because that is a powerful buff for all of this stuff. Not to mention, they're not too bad at all in combat themselves. Double Mark of Corn Dreadnoughts from Cornholio. Awesome to see. And that is a completely wasted nuke from Fear. Literally hit nothing on the enemy team, I don't think. Actually killed more allied stuff. Gonna take out that CSL model. Oh, it, it threw some Assault Terminators around. So, um, is that triple Mark of Corn Dreadnoughts? My goodness. This is awesome. Does he have the red to warp this guy out? Uh, I don't know. If he does, I think he does. He let he either let it go down to free up some pop, or it was on cooldown maybe. Another Mark of Gun Dreadnought with Blood Rage active, smacking around that Force Commander. There's Fletcher over Steel though, completely shutting down the Dreadnought. No movement, no attacking the Batman Dread. Oh, he can move there. A full flesh of a steel completely tied you up down. 96 to 113. So 1 to 1. Maybe just heavily snares you and prevents attack like the haywire grenade, which is there. I think he's going to drop two of these dreadnoughts. Oh, look at that. The fusion gun from the Autark. Not something you see very often. Mainly because it's a tier 3 weapon and the Autark usually drops in tier 1 and wants to get her spear. But made short work of that Dreadnought. Down it goes. What is the DPS on this thing? 33.6 melter DPS on a unit so fast that can also jump. That's pretty amazing. Hive of Tarrant's going to be revived. And they both get the XP for it. Level 5 Sorcerer and a level, almost level 8 Plague Champion. The blue team have the bottom sewed, sewed up. They even have red team's natural power here. But red have the two contested VPs. And this often happens on the arena maps. On Typhon Arena and Arena of Ashes. It's the team that recognizes the time to go top first that wins sometimes. Sorcerer dropping down his Chains of Torment. And then it gets absolutely owned by Rangefire. Got to shoot that central mass. There we go. Play champion level 8. Assault Terminators are a real problem. Not seen those Lightning Claws yet. Maybe because they know there is at least one other Dreadnought around. They are still doing some serious damage to those CSM though. Level 4 CSM, level 9 now. Plague Champion, how do they level up so fast again? What the hell? 59 to 108. 1 to 1 is anyone's game. But can Red Team push against the Carnifex? A Thornback. And there are some Gene Stillers, and Gene Stillers will tear those Terminators to shreds, especially with Rending Claws. With Adrenal Rush are up. Thundhammer Terminators have no chance. In fact, the only thing that has a chance, I think, are Lightning Claw Terminators. 59 to 103. Here we have a Chaos Predator for Fear. He's got another one on the way, but it can be very difficult to get those tracked vehicles up these stairs to engage effectively. At the moment, he can freely shoot upon those assault marines, so it's not too bad, but now he needs to get them up here, those tanks, somehow. What is this? Warp spiders tearing apart some heretics. See a council getting into combat down here. How did he get here? There's no, there's no webway gates. See a council do get away. Dreadnought very, very upset with this Autark. And we have another Dreadnought. This is the, the fourth one, I think, from Cornholio. Uh-oh. Assault Terminator is being chased by lots and lots of scary things. A tank, Gene Sealers, a Hive Tyrant with Psychic Scream. Awesome. 30% damage debuff. I think it lasts 15 seconds. Pretty nice piece of war gear. Leveling up to three is the Hive Tyrant now. Can they get these Terminators? Do they have teleport coming off cooldown soon? If not, they are done for. And down they go. Crippling poison there. Slowing them down. Oh, Venerable Dreadnought dropped in the bottom. The march of the Dreadnoughts all around. Awesome. 59 to 74. It's so close. Plasma Gun Tech Marine now. Shooting up that shrine. Here comes the Venerable. And this Dreadnought is not a Mark of Corn Dreadnought. 
so we'll not have melee resistance. Venable Dreadnought is going to go to town on it. 1750 hit points on this guy. A unique walk up for the Tech Marine, and pretty damn awesome it is. Set for a cost increase in the next update. That is marked target, but it should be able to get away, that guy, I think. Cyclone Missile Launcher cannot finish it off. Here comes the Mark of Corn Dreadnought. Blood Rage activated. Z Talk is retaking the top there. Blue team are going to get the 2 to 1, I think. How's this fight going to go? Are you going to warp it out? Cornholo, there we go. Cornholo is down to three units, double dreadnoughts and some CSM. Double tanks on the field though for fear. Double predators and this might be enough. They might just need these two natural VPs. As I said, very difficult. can be very difficult to push up those stairs. Not only can it be tough for pathing, but you are just asking to be nuked when you're bunched up on their stairs. It's complete nuke bait. Do we have any nukes available? Hans Moman has his Eldritch. Z took not far away from a Torrent Formation, but other than that, no. Hunter and Dillo obviously have used their red to get units on the field from their global bar. A Dillo with Terminators and a Venerable. Blood Letters? Oh, Blood Sacrifice Blood Letters, I guess. Oh, it's the, the Circle of Summoning or whatever it's called. Demonic Summoning, I think, from the Chaos Sorcerer. Red team are going for it. They're going for this VP. Team Steelers need to wake up. They're still idle and infiltrated there. A unit will not auto attack if it's infiltrated. Oh, Eldridge takes out one tank. Does not hit the other though, so it's still free to move. Plague Champion going to town. Is this guy level 10 yet? Nope, and goes down. What do the Seer Council themselves get away? It's a lot of stuff on retreat path. Looks like they're going to make it, I think. Yes, level 2, 28, 75 hit points. Wow. Gene Silas now capping duty. A good attempted push by Red Team, but they still can't get his VP back right now. 36 to 48 is so close. Single for Red. Blue Team are taking a natural back, though. It's going to be a 2 to 1 for Blue again. What can Red Team come up with here? Eldritch has been used. Hunter not far away from the orbital. Has some Vanguard veterans. Has no power. So can't call in some Terminators right now. What do you get? Do you just get some more tactical marines? Some more assault marines? Some devastators up here. Oh look at that. Genesis has forced off. Oh oh. Nuke on the Terminators. That is going to wipe them out if they're not careful. Yeah it's going to wipe them out. 32 to 32. 2 to 1 cat for... Blue team, I guess Adila wasn't paying attention to them there. Could have could have walked out, I think. But tactical marines are here to cap. Is it enough? Because blue team have now taken bottom. Or tuck. Ouch. Taking hits from double mark of one dreadnoughts. Yet more dreadnoughts from Cornholio. Is that the fifth? The sixth? Awesome. Awesome to see. More Phobos. Sorry, the first Phobos from Fear. Does like his Phobos is fear. From the times I've played against him and Blue Team take it. Phobos is not relevant. They have taken a game. Two to one. Pretty frantic stuff at the end. Both teams trying to juggle the top with also holding the bottom. And Blue Team put it off. So many Dreadnoughts going down. Fear also lost a bunch of stuff. But they held on. Zetort was really strong at the top. Superbly strong. Kept the Raveners alive, had Genie Sillers, had a level 3 Hive Tyrant, and did good things camping this VP with his brood nest and stuff. Fear losing both of his Predators. Blue Team lost a lot of stuff, but they pull out the victory. They did what had to be done. Let's look at the Commanders end of the game. Warlocks level 4, Force Commanders level 6, Tech Marine level 5, and down. Did he have... Yeah, he's got the Melter Gun there. Hive Tyrant level 3, have you seen? Plague Champion did not get level 10. Papa Nurgle is not pleased and the Sorcerer level 6. And there we have it guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.